on YouTube total compensation videos about how much a software engineer makes or how much their offer was when they got hired by Fang is like a rite of passage to make that video if you're a tech creator. But no one actually breaks down one of the key components in this total compensation conversation, which is the stocks. But first, let's familiarize ourselves with a few definitions which will make the conversation easier to follow if you're new or it's an area that you're just interested in learning more about. TC is total compensation. This is a breakdown of how much money you will make in a year with everything included base salary, stock, and bonuses. RSU stands for restricted stock unit. So this is part of that stock portion of your total compensation. Vesting is the process of earning your RSUs, which I'll break down further in this video. And then base salary is how much money you'll be making on a yearly basis guaranteed. And then bonus, which is anything extra you get throughout the year. So total compensation consists of those three components, the base, the stock and the bonus. So let's see what engineers at different companies make over at levels.fyi. So here we have an Amazon mid-level engineer or SDE2 and their base salary is $171,865. Their stock per year, which is important, keep that in mind, is $72,401 per year. And then their bonus is $6,726 a year, making their total compensation $251,000 per year. Let's flip over to a junior engineer Netflix. This is an L3. Their base salary is $209,000 and $848. Their stock per year is just $1,364 and their bonus is $5,614. So quite a different breakdown between Netflix and Amazon, but let's check a third company. So now let's look at a senior level engineer over at Discord. Their base salary is $225,600. Their stock per year is $122,469,000, but Discord is not a publicly traded company and lasts $3,000. $77 in bonus, making their total compensation $351,146. So I broke down those numbers that we just saw in the previous screen and really see the breakdown of how these three different companies handle their total compensation. Obviously, the outlier here is Netflix, where 96.7% of the total compensation is in base, which is very nice because that's guaranteed money. And why that's so different and potentially important is in Amazon Discord's case, you consider their base is roughly the same from 64.2% over at Discord to 68% over at Amazon, and their stock breakdown is fairly similar again. Amazon just shy of 30% while Discord is practically at 35. Now, what this means is once a year, you will gain 30% of your total compensation in these RSUs through a vesting schedule. But in the case of Netflix, you don't need to wait for any RSUs to be granted or any stock to be granted. You're just guaranteed your hefty salary. So here is a stock breakdown for someone who may be new to this. So let's say you get hired at Amazon, congrats, and you get a lump sum of RSUs granted right away. Now, this is not the yearly sum. When you get hired and you get granted these RSUs, this is not that $72,401 right off the bat. They will actually grant you a ton of stocks, which will be granted through a four year period. So in the example I have here, you get hired at Amazon and you get a thousand shares of Amazon. And if we look at the price of how much Amazon is, it's trending or trading at $127.12 USD. So if you get a thousand shares of Amazon at that price, then your total stock granted, the total RSUs you got, is 127,120 USD. Now this is not per year because in the following, it's important to understand the vest breakdown. If you get a thousand shares granted, you'll only get a portion or percentage of those shares vested to you every X interval. Now, this is a very basic example here, but essentially you get a thousand shares like our example. And then every year you get a course, 250 shares. Typically in your first year, you may get like something one to 5% shares. And you can see here at the bottom, you can break it down. So year one, two, three, four, because it's all 25%, you'll be making or gaining $31,700 if we use this price here of the total granted RSU value being 127,000. 
$120. All right, so let's talk about the tax man here because I think it's important to discuss this. Now, that $31,700 is actually very far from the truth because you technically get taxed twice. And let me explain why. So the first tax you get is the company actually granting or vesting these stocks into your personal brokerage account. And once you gain these, you basically have to sell to cover your taxes or you can not sell to cover taxes right away when they grant them. But at the end of the year, you're going to have to add this to your taxes yourself. And the second time you get taxed is actually completely separate from when you granted these stocks from your company. Anytime you have any sort of capital gain or you sell the actual stock for liquid cash through a brokerage, you will be taxed on that. If it's not a tax free account, which in the most cases, I'm fairly sure they're not. Another question you may be asking yourself is what if the price of Amazon goes up? We got granted our 1000 shares at $127.12. And let's use this date for example. But let's say in year two, Amazon stock, it's going to move up. So what happens then? The 1000 granted on this date was evaluation at $127 at the time of granting. But let's say in year two, well, Amazon stock goes up in price. So what happens? So in year one, if let's say the price just stays the same, well, you'll get the $31,700 because it's 250 shares, multiply that value, quick and easy math. If the Amazon price is 140, then you still get 250 shares times 140 instead, and it actually equals to 35,000 instead of the 31.7. So it's beneficial for you if the stock goes up. Nvidia, for example, the people who are in Nvidia for 10 years now are millionaires because they joined and got granted stock when the price and evaluation of Nvidia per share were much lower than what it is today. But on the flip side, let's say in year three, the price of Amazon goes down. It's actually lower than the 127 when you initially got hired. So what happens? Well, you only get the 250 shares times 100 for $25,000, which is still a lot of money, but it's way lower than 35,000. And it's even lower than the amount that was guaranteed to you when you initially signed your offer letter. And now the last topic I want to cover here is what happens if the company you work for like Discord gives you stocks, but the company is not publicly traded. How does that work? Well, let me just say, first of all, it's true. If you are not working at a public traded company and you gain a bunch of shares, they don't mean anything. That's it. They don't exist. They're not publicly traded. They have no valuation besides the one that the company that you work for evaluates per share on those stock. However, that doesn't mean you don't actually gain money for it. Let me explain. In the case of Discord, we saw the $122,000 per year. So does that mean it doesn't actually exist? Well, no, because what these companies would do is actually have a buyback period, which is exactly the same as working at Amazon and getting the grant vested to you. So instead of you actually getting the stock into a brokerage because it's not publicly traded, the companies will actually buy back a portion of the stock for you for cash. So let's say you have a thousand shares of Discord stock, and in year one, your buyback option is this we can buy back 250 shares of that stock from you for liquid cash at a price they evaluate, which that is kind of the downside of it because they can basically regulate how much the stock costs. There's also a very strong benefit of working for these companies that are not public yet because you can see here Instagram when it IPO'd was trading at $34. Now, all the engineers and people that got stock at Instacart before the time of IPO, they got a value much, much, much lower than $34. So a very common strategy when you work at a company that doesn't have publicly traded stock is work there, gain the stock, maybe do a buyback period if you want, or if you want some extra cash. If it goes public, you will be making a ton of money. Let me repeat that, a ton of money, but the company may never go public and those shares may never amount to anything if you choose not to go through their buyback process. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Was this helpful? Was this information you know, useful to you at all? Let me know. And if there's anything else you guys want to know in these kind of style of videos, please drop a comment. Let me know what type of videos you want to see me make because I do it all for you. And I got to leave you off with one thing. You got to power it.